Polyrath doesn't get the respect it deserves for real. Well, I mean, its stats are definitely not good, but it's got a few tricks. Its ability Swift Swim allows it to double its speed in the rain, making Buddy actually super fast. It can also bust out Belly Drum, maxing out its attack at plus 6, at the cost of half of its health. We pop a Citrus Berry to bring it back to pretty healthy, and now basically nothing outspeeds it, and even resisted liquidations in the rain grab knockouts. It can use Drain Punch for some healing, and Close Combat for some big ol' damage when needed. And at 0% usage, Polyrath is super underrated when it can pull off this type of nonsense. Alright look, Polyrath has the wombo combo of not only being one of the greatest Gen 1 Pokemon designs, but also Buddy's criminally underrated, and so that is what I'm into. If you're into that kind of thing as well, you should consider hitting that subscribe button, because I'm on my way to 400k, and I'd love to have you as part of the journey. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so my dude's gonna go ahead and lead off with the Mew. Now of course, this little fella can do whatever it wants, but as a lead Mew, I'm kind of expecting this thing to go for something like a potentially a taunt, or just set up Stealth Rock and just be a little lead Mew guy. Now, it turns out, however, they're gonna go for Scald, so... Um, did not expect, but it does in fact break my sturdy on the fortress as I'm just here to just be an orb to who sets up Stealth Rock. So, I do get my rocks up, and they probably just kind of wanted to get some chip on the fortress, potentially burn, and make my life a little bit worse. But at this point, I'm thinking they probably go for Stealth Rock at this point, and I'm gonna Volt Switch and try to get myself a better matchup here. So, they're actually just gonna fire off some more hot water, which does bring me below half, which honestly kind of is not great for the fortress, but I can get the Volt Switch and now go into whatever I like. So, the plan with this team is Prankster Tornadus, who is able to set up some Rain Dance, and then of course, Polyrath is a guy who enjoys being moist. So, I bring in the Tornadus first, and Mew is looking at me like I'm their parent, telling me he threw up in the middle of the night. So, I'm gonna go for that Prankster Rain Dance, and uh, we're gonna try to make it rainy early out here. So, I'm kinda interested to see what this Mew wants to go for. And it turns out they're actually just gonna set up the Stealth Rock this time. So they are in fact here to set up some hazards. So here's the thing, if they wanna go for boosted Scalds in the rain, I could potentially go into Polyrath to Water Absorb. However, I'm just gonna go for the U-turn, get a little bit of a pivot and see what they wanna do. I'm almost kind of expecting them to then have something like Spikes or potentially some screen setup. So I do take some Rocky Helmet Chip, which uh, does at least reveal what this thing's working with. And I decide, you know, I'm just going to go right into the Polyrath. Of course, if this thing does have the Psychic Stab, it is not going to be great. But I figure I can take at least one of them, and especially if they want to go for a Scald this turn. Now, it turns out they're instead going to go for the Volt Switch. That brings me down to nearly half, which is unfortunate. And now they can decide a matchup on whatever they want to bring in. And they're going to go right into the Chestnut. So, Chestnut is not, it, is Chestnut great for me? So while they definitely have the matchup on their side here, the one thing that I have is a little element of surprise. They definitely do not expect Polyrath to stay in here. And I'm going to end up going for the Belly Drum because I know that I'm like, you know what, I made it this far in here, I might as well at least give it a try. And as I maximize my attack, we're now sitting at plus six. We also get a, a nice little snack with the Citrus Berry. And uh, they're actually going to end up going for the Spikes, which is perfect. They probably expected a switch there. And now there's a couple different things that can happen here. Of course, one being Spiky Shield. If I end up touching a Spiky Shield, that's not going to be great. But with the Citrus Berry, I feel like I should be able to at least take one hit of that. I'm going to go for the Drain Punch. They do not Spiky Shield, and Chestnut is so damn defensive that it actually lives the Drain Punch. Well, I do get a whole bunch of health back. This now allows it to um, potentially just go for an attack here. But they're actually going to go for the Synthesis. That brother is in fact synthesizing in the rain, so it actually doesn't get the full amount of health back. Does it bring? It does bring it like just below half, which I'm like, okay, this is actually perfect. Now if I can conserve rain turns, Polyrath is actually in a great spot. So I don't know if they expected me to just get out of there. Regardless, the synthesis allows me to now just go for the close combat to finish it off to guarantee a fella dies. And down goes the chestnut, which is basically their best defensive answer to the Polyrath at this point. So. Now they can go into whatever they like, they decide to bring in the Excadrill. Now, Polyrath, of course, with my doubled speed, should easily be able to outspeed the guy and uh, just enjoy these rain turns kind of while I got him. Plus, I can Drain Punch, try to get some health back, and make the longevity allow this fella to stick around. So, I go for the Drain Punch here. They're actually going to end up switching into the Mew, thinking potentially this thing can take uh, the Fighting Hit. I'm trying to be a little bit careful about going for things like Drain Punch, because they do have... Uh, the ghost type in the form of Dragapult in the back. So as Mew comes in, bop him right in his little Mew kitty face, 
And uh, I do take some Rocky Helmet, which is fine because, you know, I healed it back anyway. And now we are absolutely rolling with the Poly. So back comes the Excadrill. I am concerned about a potential little sneaky Terra there. So instead of going for the fighting move, I'm going to go for the Liquidation instead because I've seen my fair share of Terra Ghosts happening on Steel type. So I also don't really have much of a reason to go for the Drain Punch there. I know a Liquidation is, is at freaking plus six and in the rain. It's going to kill just about anything. So it turns out they do bust out the Terra Ghost, expecting me to go for that fighting move. But the Liquidation surprises his ass, and that does take the freaking Mole back to the Shadow Realm where he belongs. So that gets rid of the Terra, so no more sneaky surprises there. And now we're basically just trying to use up all the rain turns that we got and see if we can just fully body bag him with the Wrath. So in comes the Greninja. And as I'm looking at Greninja here, I'm thinking they might be trying to bait me into going for another fighting move. And then just switching into the Dragapult, basically wasting a rain turn. Because at this point, I think I have two turns left. And uh, I'm going to go for the Liquidation instead, just because, again, at plus six, boosted by Stab and in the rain, it's, it does a lot even through Resist. So they do actually end up switching into the Dragapult here. Fool comes out with his ghostly little tail flicking around. And the boy Polly is not playing that fighting type nonsense. The Liquidation does just uh, take the thing out, which is fantastic. And down goes the Dragapult. And once again, Polyrath is absolutely doing it to him. So that is going to take care of my last turn of rain, which is unfortunate because now Greninja comes in in a position where this thing is going to be faster. And as I'm looking at Greninja here, I'm thinking, okay, so knowing that this thing's most offensive options are going to be, you know, water, ice, and potentially the only thing it can really hit me with is like a sludge wave. So I'm actually going to end up busting out the Terra freaking ground. Now, this is supposed to be a Terra fire polyrath, but this one is actually Terra ground. And it could potentially save me here. Because I go for that Terra Ground expecting their only option to be Sludge Wave. And that's exactly what they're going to go for. So it does get the stab on the Sludge Wave. Check this shit out. I live with 1 HP. Somehow, <laughs> Polyrath with the bull Cut able to come in absolutely insanely clutch. And live with 1 there due to the freaking Terra. So, accidental wrong Terra comes in clutch. I guess not. I've just been experimenting with different Terras. But in this situation... Knowing that Sludge Wave was their best option there was very nice for me. So, at this point, they now just basically have breakfast in the form of one nice little egg here. And uh, Blissey is not going to have a fun time with the Drain Punch. So, they're actually just going to head out. And that is going to be the end of the match. So, I thought that was just an interesting game there with the freaking 1 HP live. Polyrath is the damn undisputed GOAT. So, we already know that we're not stopping there. I do have another match for you because Polyrath is extremely fun. Not a lot of people are expecting Belly Drum from this thing, which is fun. He's like the the freaking the face of Belly. I feel like he's the Belly Drum guy. You know, he just looks like he'd be Belly Drumming. But uh, let's go ahead and jump into it. So this time my opponent is going to lead off with Big Buff Gremlin. And I'm like, wow, I've never seen this thing as a lead before. I bet he's not going to go for a reflect or a light screen and then just parting shot out of here. So I, of course, lead off with a Walnut. He's a wall. He's a nut, and of course, he's here to party. So they do go for the reflect, of course, as I'm just gonna lay down my stealth rocks and be like, hey, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna set these here. Don't mind me, just being a walnut guy. So I get up my rocks, which is great. And as I'm looking at their team comp, they do not have a rapid spinner, but they potentially could have Noivern with defog, something like that. I'm regardless. I'm just gonna go ahead and lay a nice little layer of spikes here, try to punish some switching, and just be annoying. So they do, in fact, go for the parting shot. So called exactly what this fellow was gonna do. And now they decide to bring in the Gengar. So a couple of spooky boys. And Gengar doesn't necessarily threaten the fortress. But also, I can't really do too much to this thing. And I don't know what this wants to go for. So as I set up my spikes, I've not got a couple of layers of hazards. And I am now just going to go for the Volt Switch. I know that I'm slower, which is always a good kind of pivot for me. Knowing what they're going to do first. It turns out they're going to Toxic Spikes. Which is not ideal, because I do not have a Grounded Poison on my team. But the good news is, I do have a, a couple of Rapid Spinners. First of all, one being Fortress, but also, I've got the Mole. And Drillbert is the kind of fella who likes to spin around. Of course, you know, I can't against the Gengar, but uh, it's fine. Because this thing can't really hit me. And Excadrill does have the option here to either go for some setup, or potentially just go for a nice little Earthquake. So, I'm going to go for the guaranteed damage here as I go for that Earthquake. They're actually going to end up switching as... They bring right back in the Grimmsnarl. So they do still have up the Reflect, which is annoying, but Grimmsnarl comes in, takes a little bit of Hazard's Chip, and an Earthquake is going to put this thing in at least a good spot to where I know an Iron Head should be able to kill here. So 
I'm instead going to go for the Swords Dance. That's just because I expect the Parting Shot. And if I can go ahead and just grab myself a Swords Dance, I still end this turn at uh, plus one. And if Excadrill can get a speed boost from a Rapid Spin, the Drill is looking real nice here. So, they actually do Parting Shot. They're going to end up going into um, the friggin' Umbreon, which is just the bulky fell you just hate to see. Uh, but I'm going to get that Swords Dance up, so I'm going to be at plus one. Uh, keep in mind, they are still behind the Reflect over there, but it should be ending here pretty soon. And honestly, Excadrill doesn't have a bad matchup against the Umbreon. Unless, of course, it's running foul play. So, at this point, I'm going to go for the Rapid Spin for two reasons. First of all, I want to get rid of those Toxic Spikes, but also with a Speed Boost, I'm now faster than everything. And then, if I can get through this matchup, Excadrill is going to go crazy. Except for the fact that they do have the foul play, and that is going to pop my Balloon and my Mole. So, down goes the Drill. And while I did at least get rid of the hazards, I'm not going to be sweeping with the Excadrill today. So, looking at this Umbreon, I'm thinking to myself, this is actually a great opportunity to set up Polyrath. I am actually in a really good spot for that versus... Here's the Umbreon, but first, I need to get up some rain. So, I'm going to go into the Tornadus, because uh, sometimes you got to go for some manual rain. Anybody can switch in a Drizzle guy, but... You know, my buff ass has to go ahead and do a, do a little dance for him. So, I set up that rain dance, which now is going to open the door for this thing to go for a Calm Mind. So, Calm Mind Foul Play uh, is a bit scary, but then I'm thinking, okay, this is still kind of fine. If this thing wants to stay in here and set up, I'm kind of okay with that. Because if I can bring in Polyrath, I should be able to uh, at least threaten it out. So, I am now going to just go for a U-turn. I want to get a little bit of damage and also bring in the Polyrath here. So... Polyrath is obviously, it's not the greatest option to bring in as a belly drummer against a guy who's rocking foul play. But, knowing that uh, Umbreon does not enjoy the fighting type matchup, they're probably not pr too eager to stay in here. So, as I bring in Polyrath, I'm kind of banking on the fact that they're just worried about a, you know, potential close combat. Plus, they don't know that I'm going to go for that belly drum, making their foul play a whole lot worse. So as they set up a second Calm Mind, I'm thinking I am probably in a decently safe spot to go for a Belly Drum here. If it doesn't end up working out, it's fine. We gave it a, the old college try. So the Reflect is going to wear off, which is great. And I am going to go ahead and Belly Drum in the face of this Foul Play, which they do actually end up switching out. My bluff is going to work because uh, they do not want to just be you know bopped in the face there by the fighting move. And they decide to go into the Dragapult, which is actually perfect for me. So... First of all, Dragapult hurts his little feats with uh, some spikes and some stealth rock, but now we just slam the old belly, and now Michael Phelps is swimming fast as hell out here. So some would even say, in a swift fashion, I can now uh, get that citrus berry. We're now maxed out at our attack, we're doubled our speeds, so we're definitely faster than Dragapult. And while I can't hit this thing with any neutral hit, a liquidation in the rain at plus six is going to be able to take care of the pult. So that is exactly what you like to see. Polyrath working exactly how designed, and now they go back into Grimmsnarl, uh, who does have the option to set back up a Reflect, or potentially Parting Shot. I'm just going to Liquidation, as it turns out they, in fact, just don't go for either, and Liquidation just takes care of the Snarl, and it's gotten to the point where this Polyrath is basically out of control <laughs> here, because you'll notice as they bring in the Noivern, it does take that Stealth Rock chip, so not going to be Heavy Duty Boots which is fine by me, and while I cannot hit this thing with a neutral attack either, you know, I noticed that uh, Liquidation in the Rain should be able to do it. Now, I'm actually going to end up busting out the Terra Fire here, just because if they want to somehow be a defensive fella and live this Liquidation, at least the Terra Fire will, will allow me to um, live in Air Slash. So, I just go for that Liquidation into Rain, definitely just takes care of the Noivern, and that is going to be a dead old Bat Boy. So... Now as they bring in Gengar, everything gets outsped by the, <laughs> the Polyrath here. I've got tons of rain turns left, and uh, at plus six, we're just over here with a chandelier in the rain, and just doing some weird frog shit. So that is, <laughs> they're actually going to head out, because, yeah, the Polyrath, it gets out of hand. It, it just, it happens. So that is going to do it for that one. However, I do have one last little bonus match for you, and listen, if you've stuck around this far into the video, you should go ahead and hit that like button, or else a belly drum Polyrath will be visiting you in your dreams tonight. And uh, let's go ahead and jump into it. So this time the tables have turned a bit. As my opponent is going to lead off with the Fortress, I actually decided to lead off with the Entei. So I expected the Fortress lead, and now I get the benefit of that being in here with the Entei because Choice Banded Sacred Fire Entei has no switch-ins. Literally nothing wants to switch into this, and it's kind of just how it goes with this freaking thing. I'm going to go for the Sacred Fire just because it does a lot to anything. 
Plus, we got that nice little burn chance. So, as they decide to switch into the Dunsparce, I hit them with the Sacred Fire, does a whole bunch of damage. Does not get the burn, however, but I know that obviously I can just pick this thing off and they probably just switch into the Sparse as a nice little death fodder here. So, all I gotta do is land a Sacred Fire, but I miss. And hey, that's sometimes how it goes. Sacred Fire is a 95% accurate move. Sometimes that 5%. It's gonna come through and get you there. So they click the headbutt, likely not expecting for an attack to go through. And you know, this is fine. Not a huge punishment for the miss. And I'm just gonna go for another Sacred Fire, but this one misses, I missed two in a row. Two 5% misses in a row now is gonna punish me with a glare. So <laughs> this thing goes for the glare, which is gonna paralyze me. And now I have the option to be freaking flinched by headbutts if this thing is now faster being paralyzed. And I'm like, please, Ante, just, just land the Sacred Fire. This thing was a freaking sack switch in here, and now it's just being an asshole. So, it does outspeed, goes for the headbutt, luckily it doesn't get the flinch, but guess what? I go for this third Sacred Fire, and it misses again. I have no idea what's going on here. I just missed three 5% chances in a row. I don't even know the odds, but surely that's, that doesn't happen often. And I don't think that's even happened to me since this game came out. So, I do luckily not get flinched or paralyzed by this next headbutt. And uh, I am going to connect on the fourth Sacred Fire. Thank God, holy hell. So at this point, Entei was supposed to be basically fully healthy. I am instead in red health and paralyzed. So that's not ideal. However, as they decide to bring in the Greninja, I figure I could potentially still get some value out of Extreme Speed Entei with the Choice Band later if need be. Because I can actually just freely switch into Tornadus here. I guess not freely. I know that I can take one attack from this thing. And this Greninja matchup is really enticing for Polyrath. And that's basically what I got got my eyes set on here. As they go for the Waterfall, I can take at least one of them. And at this point now, I'm going to go for that Rain Dance. I want to get up that Rain for the Polyrath because as they finish me with one more Waterfall here, this is a great matchup uh, for the Wrath to come in. We know that the only kind of coverage they can hit me with would be basically just any neutral hit, like uh, Poison Coverage. So... We are in the rain, and now it is time to bring in the Polyrath, who is in a fantastic spot to go for a Belly Drum here, which is exactly what we're going to do. We want to see if this Greninja you know, wants to stay in here. If they want to switch, that is fine, because I obviously am just going to be faster than everything, and at plus six, Polyrath is going to be a real liability here. So they do actually end up switching into the Fortress. They know that Greninja you know, can't do enough to me. It runs the risk of being hit by a fighting move there. But instead, we're just going to smack the old belly, and that maximizes the attack, and all that belly drumming's hard work. You work up a nice little appetite, we grab ourselves a citrus berry, and it is time. So, fortress is, there's one bad situation here with this fortress, and that is if this thing is going to be red card, because we know it has sturdy, it's going to be able to live an attack, and I just decided to go for that drain punch just to, you know, break the sturdy, get some health back, and it's not going to be red card, thank god. They take this opportunity, you know, to set up the stealth rock here. Um, in the face of the freaking death, which is this Polyrath. And we're over here just shiny, chilling in the rain, moist, moisturized, and freaking thriving here. So, at this point, we've broken the sturdy. We are at full health. I can now just start firing off some big old liquidations that basically nothing wants to live. It's going to take care of the fortress there, which is amazing. And now we get to see kind of how they're going to react to the threat. That is freaking plus six Polyrath in the rain. So, in comes the Galarian Slowking. A lot of the times these fellas are going to be defensive. Uh, it just depends on how defensive you're going to be here, guy. Because I go for the liquidation, and yeah, that just absolutely obliterates the fella. So, down goes the Slowking. And as long as this rain is around, we are basically just speedy and faster than everything. So, here's the thing. They decide now to go into Greninja. And uh, I'm just like, okay, this is fine. I can go for a Drain Punch here. Have myself a little Drain in time. But they're actually going to bust out the Terra, and here's where it gets a little bit interesting. It is going to end up being the Poison Terra. So, first of all, that is going to now allow it to live the Drain Punch. Not only that, uh, but it's also going to boost a freaking Gunk Shot. And <laughs> you'll notice this thing went faster than me, and that's because it turns out to be a Choice Scarf uh, Greninja there. So it's able to outspeed, um, but luckily a Drain Punch is, I thought, still going to be able to kill it. It literally lives with like 2 HP. So. That was a crazy turn of events there, but uh, luckily I drain punched myself to a position where I can then live another gunk shot, which is insane. They do connect on some more gunk, but luckily this Polyrath is thick as a bowl of oatmeal and I can finish it off with one more drain punch. So that is going to take care of the Greninja, also takes care of their option for the Terra. And while, you know, that is going to be really nice for us, they're still in a position where they have some pretty big threats in the back. And I don't have enough rain turns to finish off the 
the full sweep with the Polyrath at least, I don't think. So, they're now going to bring in the Iron Valiant. And this thing is going to be booster energy speed. Here's the thing. If it is plus one speed um, and it's not a plus speed nature, I'm actually still faster than this thing in the rain. So, I'm just going to go for a liquidation here, but they realize that thing is probably going to be their late game win condition. So, they switch that thing out. They decide now to bring in the Hydrapple. Uh, who is definitely a guy that can take a liquidation. Even in the rain, it's not going to do a whole lot to the thing. Um, and down goes the rain. So with that gone, I know that I'm probably still faster than the Hydrapple, luckily, but I'm not going to be faster than the Valiant. So even though I can go for the close combat to finish off the Hydrapple, now we have the issue of Iron Valiant is going to be faster than everything I've got, even without that booster energy speed. So we got ourselves a nice little situation where I have one Mon left, but also this thing is a huge threat. If Valiant is still alive, there's still a chance for them. So they do outspeed, allows them to fire off a Moonblast, and down goes the Polyrath. So here's the thing, looking at what I have left, um, nothing really does well against this, except I have one shot, and that is with my Excadrill. So I bring in the Excadrill here just because obviously this thing has the option to finish me off with the Fighting Stab, um, but I still have the Terra in my back pocket, and I basically need to use the Dragon Terra to allow myself to potentially live an attack and then get off the Iron Head and then, thank God, at least hopefully not be friggin' reverse swept by this Iron Valiant. So I bust out the Dragon Terra. That's just because I do not want to get destroyed by any, any type of fighting move at this point. And as they are going to go for the Focus Blast, first of all, it doesn't miss. And check it out, I am able to barely hang on with 21 HP. Uh, the Dragon Terra absolutely saved my life. I can then go for that Iron Head, and that is going to take care of the Valiant. So that was clutch because I definitely would have most likely been swept uh, by the late game Valiant if it wasn't for the Terra there. So that was a really good game and a fun one to finish off the Polyrath shenanigans. So thank you guys very much for watching. I appreciate all the support. Make sure to leave a like on the video if you haven't already. And uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.